making month. I think we could make some beautiful music together. We've got James Wilshire here tonight. I think he's gonna make some music with us. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist, guys. It is, uh, you gotta love Neptune, right? So I heard this track today, and uh, it was irresistible. So hello, welcome to uh, day 20 of Music Making Month. We got, we got a lot more coming, but we've, we've come a long way, haven't we? So listen, a couple rules for the new people. Uh, if you're new to the chat, just throw the word question, if you've got a question for James, and that'll help my eyes hone in on it. And um, other than that, if you'd like your music to be featured at the beginning of the show, probably without the Barry White, that was a one time, but uh, go ahead and tweet me your music. You can tweet it with the hashtag MMMPropSongs. That's MMM Prop Songs. Or you can post it on our Facebook wall if you go to facebook.com slash propellerhead. And I'll go through that stuff every day. I'll pick out a song and I'll give you the spot of honor, as it were. So, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand the floor over tonight uh, to a man far more clever than I. And uh, a bit more of a whiz at uh, Reason to Record than I as well. And he's got the results to prove it. So, uh, there's a lot to learn tonight. Put on your thinking caps. And everybody, say hello to James Wiltshire from Freemasons. James, say hello to the internet. I hope you're all having fun out there. Welcome to Brighton. It's a beautiful evening down here. Um, I must warn you, though, my fiancé is in the pub. So we <laughs> might have drunk girlfriend syndrome at any, any point this evening. All right. Uh, we'll you know we'll be on the lookout. Well. You know, it's probably a good idea. You know, they say the world's going to end tomorrow. So if, you're, if there ever were a night to get, you know smashed it's uh it'd be tonight. tomorrow that's what they yeah that's what i'm hearing on the internet that apparently there's a, some prophecy tomorrow's the day you know they keep kind of kicking the ball downfield every time they're wrong so but i won't bother taking the king's speech back to the video shop then. <laughs> yeah right exactly <laughs> perfect all right well so um what what do we got we got a lot to go over tonight don't we Yes, quite a few bits. Now, one of the first things, one of the things I really want to do here this evening is actually um, use kind of real world examples and show how we use reason and record um, on a on a day to day basis or a week by week basis. Um, there's plenty, there's a few little tricks as well and some other stuff. In fact, even things that I even came up with today whilst I was setting this up, huh. um, and it just kind of shows how customizable and um, creative this uh, this whole package is. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is. The reason we actually jumped down Record's throat straight away was um, the real-time time stretch engine, which for us is obviously doing an awful lot of remix work. And um, having seen some of the initial parts of it, even when it was in pre-release, we were beating a door down um, to actually get hold of a copy when it came out. Because for us, the idea of being able to chuck audio into a system um, whilst you're just about really in the very early stages of doing a remix, and then uh, being able to work bits out whilst your tempo is still incredibly fluid, um, it was a godsend. Now, at first, we thought we were just going to be doing this, and then we'd use some of the bigger programs to actually do the, the, the offline rendering and all of the normal stuff that we've been used to over the years. But we found with Record uh, that the the actual algorithm behind the engine in this was so powerful um, that on many, many an occasion, we've used nothing but Record to do the time stretch, and quite considerably as well. So um, have you got my desktop there? Is it all? I do. I do. I'm moving over. Hang on, I have people. <laughs> As always, I haven't used open iChat for about three months. So. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to get a bunch of the, uh, where you been? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, guys, so um, yeah, what I first want to do is I've got some effectively stems here. It's actually from a track we've been working on in the studio, but I just um, want to show you. Um, how we kind of use this and use the real-time time stretch engine to just work out roughly where we want to be. Um, so a blank, blank project. I'm just going to skip over. I'm using Exposure here to just go between the windows because it seems to be a bit quicker. Um, now, one of the first things that you'll need if you're receiving stems from your friends or from... Um, you can even get them on the internet now for they're even for sale for certain tracks for remix competitions or free for remix competitions etc etc but the whole idea of stems is that you get this whole series of stereo files one may be the drums two the basses effects keyboards etc etc and it's pretty much all the component parts but mixed into submixes effectively 
Um, and getting hold of them is really good fun. Um, and, spe and it's the best way to be transferring stuff in between. So listen, I'm waffling on here. Let me just quickly show you. I'm going to go and grab some stems um, using the import audio file function. Now, most importantly, down the bottom here, um, if I just go to the tempo, I know what the tempo of the original track is. That's vital that you put that in before you start to import anything uh, because it has to record needs actually something to lock onto. If you don't know the tempo, go and find it out before you actually um, stick these in. Now, I know this track's coming in at 126, so I'm just going to import. And so just to, just to uh, for, for people out there um, that sort of know what this is about, if, if it's a file that wasn't made in record, it doesn't know the tempo information yet. So basically, when you import it, it assigns whatever the current tempo. It says, okay, well, we'll make that the reference tempo. So it so it, that's that's what James is saying when he says to you need to know the tempo of the file you're importing because it's going to now have that. And when you change the tempo, then it will change in relation to that reference tempo. I don't think I made that clear. Oh, <laughs> No, you, that, made, that made perfect sense to me. What I was waffling on about didn't. Um, okay, guys, well, here's, a, here's a selection of files. They are actually different lengths. That's because um, it's been bounced out of a program that will stop when the audio stops. Don't worry about that. They all start at the same bar, and this is very, very vital. Um, if you're tr giving stems to someone for a remix or receiving them from someone, you need to make sure that they've all, um, as it's been run down, it's all started from the same bar. It doesn't matter where they end. As long as they start from the same place, they'll go. So I'm going to open them up here. Um, just using shift and clicking down to select multiples, and here we go. And you'll see them all very nicely come in there. Um, let me just play back. With the, I'm going to put the click on just down here and just double check um, that is everything is running time. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's all coming in. And you can hear the click so that you know that we're perfectly in time. So Hey James, can we can we uh pull the click level down on those or or maybe it's just uh a, what a, was a one time play on the click? Um see what this is like. Yeah, better? That's better, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, guys, now, if you're getting bits in like this, the first thing, obviously, you're probably going to do is the drums. Um, possibly the basses. And let's just have a little look back. Now, this is how we often use this program, just to quickly check. So, I'm going to play straight through. It only takes a spark to cause a scene, and you know it. Hey, hey, I hear talking on but now... Let's say we wanted to, um, depending on how we were going to approach this, we wanted to speed it up. We're not happy with 126. We just want to whack it up to 128. With this, you can literally just type the new tempo in, and off you go. Yeah, and I can just, and whilst it's playing, I can even grab the tempo and start to move it about and see roughly where it feels right to even before you begin to start work. It only takes a spot to cause a scene, and you know it. Hey, hey, I hear you talking underneath your breath. You know exactly which buttons to. So, as you see, that I've gone down to 107, and it's still, it's still doable. You can, in fact, we can go pretty much half time with this. Faster. Now, everyone knows that there's a few other audio applications around that do this. Um, and a lot of the sequences are even starting to do it now. So the big DAWs, like the Pro Tools and Logic and things like this. But what we found, this is so instant whilst you're actually working um, that it can be the best way to even to actually pretty much start your projects um, and get going on there. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a kind of extreme example of, um, of what's actually what this thing is actually capable of. And here I've just got uh, a quick little rec file playing. Uh, sorry, a, a redrum pattern playing and a vocal from... Um, 
that some of you will remember, hopefully, from one of our old ones. Now, the great thing about having redrum patterns and MIDI playing, obviously, is it's going to hold its clarity. It's actually just literally notes triggering samples and triggering different sounds off. So once we start drawing the tempo, um, reason or record is going to be doing its real-time time stretch on audio, whereas the MIDI notes are just going to be slowing down. So you can get some fantastic effects. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play a bit, and you can see within the transport section here that I've drawn in tempo changes. If I just quickly click onto here... You can see what I've done. It's coming from the original tempo all the way down and back up. Um, it's dead easy to do within uh, the tempo operations of transport. If you're used to editing any of the parameter information in um, record, you'll be and reason you'll be uh, very quick to get the hang of this. But let me just show you what it sounds like. It says now it's disappeared. See the tempo down here, she's going crazy. So as you can see, I mean, that's MIDI running alongside with audio. Incredibly tight. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if you saw that, but the CPU hit is absolutely minimal. Now, if you try and do that on the other application that is very well known for doing this, especially across, across multiple tracks, the whole thing just tends to give up and starts to glitch. Um, this is incredibly well encoded for a a software algorithm of this density and I can absolutely promise you we've used it on so many vocals that have actually come in for remix um, because we found it keeps all of the transients at the front. Okay, now that's, um, that's some of that. Now, the other great thing about we found um, using this software is that I'm actually just going to quit it to keep my windows down a minute. Um, the customizable functions of this and the way that you can build within combinators incredibly complex patches um, and then constantly have them stored at any point um, is an absolute godsend. Now, what I've got here is just very simply a little combinator that I actually built this afternoon because I just thought it was something, I had an idea to try something um, and wanted to see if it was possible. So as you can see here, I've got a whole selection of Thors they're basically all doing exactly the same thing. They're all connected into this mixer here. Uh, it's just a little six channel line mixer. And as you can see, I've kind of spread the pans just across the first two being white, second two in a bit, and there's one straight down the middle. Now, if I just mute everything apart from the middle one, you should hear, hopefully. There's a sound coming through there. Now, what I've done, um, is basically created five of exactly the same sound. If I just roughly show you what it is, it's very, very straightforward. Just oh. a couple of analog oscillators, both on sawtooth, slightly detuned against each other, and just one phase mod oscillator, an octave up as well. All of these are absolutely identical. Uh, now, what I wanted to try and do was create some of the um, performance sounds that uh, Darth Punk had obviously use an awful lot, but also people like Skrillex and all of those guys. Now, um, what I also wanted to do was make it big, fat, and wide. So this is why I've got five identical Thors. And what I've gone, what I've done is gone through and slightly detuned each oscillator section in each one. So, for example, these two, the first two that are on these channels, uh, panned hard left and right, one of them, all of the oscillators are slightly sharp. The other one, all of the oscillators are slightly flat. And then bring them in a little bit, um, sort of mellower versions of that. And the one straight down the middle, the oscillators are pretty, uh, are pretty straightforward. Now, what that does is effectively make it a unison, which is the, the kind of sound of these big synths at the moment, um, especially an awful lot in all sorts of electronic music, but uh, all the stuff that's in the pop charts as well at the moment. 
But what I wanted to do was use the formant filters. And I've wired them through. Uh, basically, all of those five up here uh, are submixed into this. And then they're going through um, the formant filters of the Thors that I've got here. And what you basically get is this. Can I ask you, James? Is, are, are you um, a lot of people tend to have a go-to synth? Are you are you a Thor guy? Is that your go-to synth? Yes, pretty much on this, just because of the power of it. Um, I love the way that everything's been modelled, and you can just throw these oscillators up. I did wish it had a unison mode, but that's why um, it's quite good to sometimes create your own little combinations like this that have actually you've got it kind of set up. Um, now, how I've done it with the to get through to the form and filters, so I'll just wire into the back. Um, there is one little trick I've done here, and it's something I'm going to show you a little bit in a minute. Um, Neptune can actually work as a little bit of a pitch shifter, which for making things incredibly stereo and wide, which is what everyone's after at the moment, um, can be an absolute godsend. So you can see up here, I've got all of the five uh, Thors into the back. The left hand is going into um, the Thor, uh, one of the Thors. The right hand is then going into a Neptune, out of a Neptune, and then back into the other Thor. So effectively, uh, you're making a stereo spread. And then if you look on the Neptune here, I've just detuned it. Um, and even though it is a synth, it, Neptune doesn't know whether it's a voice or a synth. It's just going to actually start to try and process it. And just by pulling um, a little bit of adjustment in there, um, or, or just actually detuning, it will make the right hand channel a little bit wider than the left. Um, I better sit this on the stereo. And for me, the great thing about this system is that once you created a patch like that, you literally just save the combination and the whole thing comes back at any point. Um, okay, now this will all make sense a little bit in a minute once I um, stick it in now. The next thing I want to show you is one of the things that's really been all the rage within mixing, um, and for good reason, because it makes everything incredibly loud, is parallel processing. Uh, parallel processing is basically uh, when you have a series of sounds, that's here. Um, it's got our form and voice and thing on there, but it's also got some loops. I'm just gonna play you back roughly what this does. So individually, if I just show you the individuals here, there's a loop. Second loop here, a bit more top end, a bit more crunch. And our form voice patch from before. Now, parallel, parallel processing and parallel compression was pretty much developed in what's well, sometimes called New York. So the, um, the studios in New York uh, take credit for it, although the main reason uh, it came about was actually in Motown when they wanted to make the vocals um, sound an awful lot brighter and a lot more powerful. Huh. Um, yeah, I found that out the other day, I didn't realise. And, realize. That, and that's, um, you know, that dates quite a ways back because parallel processing is sort of all the rage right now. It's a bit of a buzzword right now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the main reason being is that if you, if you consider you're basically creating, you're having two sounds and you're processing one with EQ and compression and then bring it up alongside the original, you kind of like your, it's almost like having a less or more slider. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, so I'm just going to solo the first loop that's on here. Quite a standard drum loop. You can see on this, I've got absolutely no EQ. And if you look at the top, I've got no, no compression. Um, main reason being is I'm, I've got a, a, an exact copy of that loop here. And it's a bit quieter. Um, let me just take the processing off so you can hear that it's exactly the same. I'll show you how I've done this in a minute. Um, it has to be done in a particularly specific way. So it's pretty much the same. So there's our first loop. Now, if I just add the second loop in, you'll hear the level jump. And if I bring 
get up. It starts to increase. Now, that's all very well and good, but it's literally you can do that with a fader. What's beautiful about this system and why it's so popular is you can basically quite severely EQ. So I'm going to add a lot of top. Nice bit of crunchy middle. And then I'm going to compress the hell out of it. Now this, the compressor section on the record mixer is based on an SSL. I think it's a, a J or a K series, which makes everyone work in this incredibly lucky because it's almost perfectly modeled. Um, I've used SSLs from the E series right up to the J's and the K's. Um, and this really, really does sound incredibly close. There is one brilliant trick in this compressor section that um, every engineer who's using SSL knows about, especially with drums. If you whack the ratio all the way up, bring the release all the way down, make sure you don't have peak or fast on, and just click the compression on. Don't worry about what it's doing and what it looks like it's doing. I'm gonna go quite heavy with it. You can see the gain reduction happening here. If I turn it off, but you hear the way that it's catching all of the fronts of the drums. It's, it's exceptionally extreme what it looks like it, but it's what everyone does with an SSL when they want to crunch drums. Now, Here's the good bit. Now we've processed um, the drum track like that. Let me just show you what happens when we start to add the EQ'd and compressed version in. So here's the original. Just by itself. Now I'm just going to solo this one alongside it and bring this in. And you can hear that power start to come into it already. Um, now that's been done in the analog domain for many, many years. It's only oh. just recently that it's actually been possible to do it because if you have, in, in the digital domain, because if you have any kind of delay um, going into the second channel, you'll get phase and phase makes everything sound horrible. Huh. Um, just a bit all over the place. Um, but let me quickly show you what, how, how you can use this to really beef up your tracks. Um, I'm gonna use the second loop here. This is the squished and EQ version. And let's add some real fancy top into this. So here's the original. And here comes the other bit mixing in. Now I'm hoping with the band is good enough that you can actually really hear the difference with this. Um, but here's a very extreme one. Here's the little form and box sound that we made earlier. Um, I'm playing the little pattern. And here is a really twisted version of it. You can see what I've done here. I've whacked the high frequency right up. Um, the mid range is pretty much going for it as well. Now, SSL LEQ is one of those things that you literally just touch it and you can hear it down the road. It's so powerful. Um, so to be able to have this within a program like this is, is phenomenal. So you can hear I've got a lot of extra grain. And you can see again, I'm using those extreme versions. So there's our riff. Now I feed, and I'm just going to start feeding the compressed version into it. You can hear it by straight away. So basically, let me just play back the three basic channels that make this little, this little idea up. Now, let me play it with our parallels in place as well. Muting the parallels, and you can hear. Instantly wow! You can hear. I mean, it just it just goes from flat to to you know, with life and punch and all these adjectives we use to describe what we want to make in our music. The, uh, yeah, and the great thing is using that compressor thing that I've shown you, I mean, do play around with it, find your own settings as well. This is incredibly versatile. I mean, it looks like it's got three knobs, but that's because it's based on the physical layout of the SSL compressor. It's one of the most versatile desk compressors and most loved by engineers as well. And if you want to know how the big guys in America, or uh, uh, you know, the real big mixing guys are getting these enormous sounds, it's using parallel techniques like this. Um, huh. And it's phenomenal to be able to get it on um, on this software. Um, so a couple of now, questions. 
that popped in uh, in the uh, the chat here. Uh, one uh, from a user called Semiprop. He just wants to know. This is off topic, but he's curious to know uh, whether you have a, your own record label. Uh, yes, we do have a small label that we just use for pre-releases. Gotcha. And then uh, there was somebody else who asked if if you could. Uh, if this was being done with a double track, if this is copies of the same audio, um, and I wonder if you could sort of share yeah, yeah, the wire. Yeah, this is, this is the most important thing because there are a few processes within... Um, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, all good. Can you still see my desktop? Yes, I can. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very important that um, everything is done actually in the correct... To create these doubles, you have to do it. Um, it's, um, there's several processes within Record and Reason that have latency involved. Some of them are in the mastering plugins, the M class, and uh, particularly the screen distortion unit. It's just because the processes are so involved that it takes a little bit of time for it to come through. So if you're using any of them, um, you'll find you won't be able to do this parallel actually using those modules. What, however, because the desk is all using the same code, the effect of the, the virtual SSL is using pretty much the same code. If you get um, the audio into two channels in parallel, no matter where they've come from, then you'll always be able to do this and it'll always work. So let me quickly show you how I've done it within. Oh dear. I I should have put the dot on the right. Okay, so here's our first loop. And it's made it's made with this combinator here that is just a just a Rex player, just playing one loop. And within the combinator you'll notice that I've got a spider audio splitter and merger. If we have a look around the back as to what's going on. Um, I've created using mix channel, uh, sorry, create mix channel in the create menu, or just from your your tool browser, another identical mix channel. And what that does is just basically creates a mix channel, but with nothing connected to it. So this is perfect for for doing this parallel work. So. This is a very simple thing. It's just literally one Rex player going into a splitter. The splitter then goes back up here to the original combinator where those con this connection from there to there would be the standard way that it's done. I've disconnected it, put the splitter in, and then the splitter is then going back into the input of the channel. So effectively, the audio is going into both this channel here and that channel here via the splitter. And it's coming in at exactly the same time. There's nothing in the way that could cause any delays or anything like that. And that's the best rule of thumb to do this. So if you have, for example, a drum machine and you've got some equalizers and compressors after it, combine all of them together and then use the output of that combinator and then um, connect it into another track. <coughs> if you do it any other way, um, and we, someone did mention to me, is it possible to do it with the inserts and things like that? There are tiny bits of delay floating around within the mixer here, so that is just the most accurate and easy way. Um, well, I hope that makes sense. It sounded a bit long-winded and confusing to me. But. No, but I think I think the key thing to to know really is that you're taking a single source, you're splitting it to two mix channels, and that's how yeah. you're getting around uh, the latency issue. And so the uh, the key uh, the key thing to know then is that parallel processing processing works when you're within the one device of the mixer, the 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 big mixer. That's it. Perfectly. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can do it if if you're using other. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, actually, right? I'm going to chop you that file. It makes sense. I always find with this kind of stuff, it's much easier if you can actually um, go through the stuff yourself and have a look. Oh, so you're going to drop so, us, what, that that uh, record file? We can post it? Yeah, I'll ha actually, I'll have to do that offline because I sure. think some of the sounds are from a sample CD. So That's great. Um, I'll, I'll post it on our forum for people. They can log in and check it out. Yep, yeah, brilliant. Okay, let's just quickly... In. 
the chat room is uh, uh, very happy to hear that news. <laughs> they, they oh, good. <laughs> yeah, as I say, it's, it's a convoluted way of explaining it, and it's the same thing with all, with all, uh, with everything in record. Sometimes it's easier to actually have the file and play around with it and have a look. I will just have to change drums of the drum sounds because they were from Harjin and Emmanuel's Loop Masters pack, and uh, gotcha. Uh, I'm very friends with Loop Master, don't want to upset them by making that stuff. <laughs> um, no, one thing I've got here is, um, as I was talking before about using that to just core, uh, to slightly change pitch, um, we've always been into quite uh, processed vocals, and especially at the moment, it's, um, there's an awful lot of it going on. Now, of course, everyone knows the auto-tune trick. It's pretty straightforward. You just literally put the pitch um, the, the pitch change onto as fast as possible, and it'll do it. Um, but there's one thing we discovered here, and let me just quickly show you what we've got. You can see I've got two Neptunes here in a combinator. Um, well, that's not, it's not, not even in the combinator, it's just in, a, in the track inserts with a little mixing desk. And the two Neptunes are panned left and right. Now what I've done, whatever's coming into the track is going off to this splitter. The splitter is then going off into these either Neptunes. One of them's panned left and one of them's panned right. If you look at what they're doing, I've got the correction speed up, but I've brought one down in tuning in just a, a few cents, eight or nine cents is fine, and brought the other one up in eight or nine cents. Uh, now, what we found this does is create an absolutely otherworldly chorus effect that I've never heard with any other device. We've tried it with auto-tune. We've tried it with all of the other things. This is the only thing that we've found that can do this. It's wonderful. It's like having one of those old rolling chorus pedals. Um, so let me just play the vocal. Sorry, I hit on there. Let me just play it without. So there's lead vocal, pretty standard, a little bit of chorus, a little bit of uh, reverb on there and a bit of delay. Now this is our version that's gone through the Neptunes. I'm your gasoline, like me. Oh it was, hang on. Um, so this is the one pure Wow. Now, the stereo on it's phenomenal. So this is our uh, dry leaf, well, effectively dry. It's got some reverb and stuff on it. But this is without processing. Now I'm going to I'm going to wind a, a sort of fake chorus in. Boy, you just have to push it every time. Why are you messing with my mind? I know what your game is. So let now, I mean, that's I like known, instant pop vocals. I know. I have. I don't know anything that makes a vocal sit like that. It's unbelievable. We literally have this. Um, once again, I think I'll have to. Ryan, you might have to remind me to do this. It's a bit hectic at the moment. I I'll, will. Um, I will gladly remind you if you're if you're willing to share that one too. It's dead simple, but I'll just I'll just combine it all and um, send the combinator program up because literally stick it on try it on anything as well because it, on synths we found it really fattens things up. One of the main reasons being is that Neptune has a tiny bit of processing delay, um, and because of that you kind of get like all good choruses and delay effects. There's a little bit of delay in there wobbling about as well. But when you put it behind anything, it's great on synth leads as well, and especially if it's just a monophonic synth lead, and you tell it which key you're in, you can get this kind of tearing. Into the um, into the notes of the chorus is actually retuning at the same time, so it's uh, it's pretty powerful. But we literally we end up bringing everything through that because we just when you're in a rush and you need to get things working. We've um, got uh, we've actually got a request to hear that again if you if you've got it handy. No problem. Um, let's see if I can do that without then making it a bit more obvious this time. It's a bit confusing. Okay, so here's our blank vocal. This is the Neptune version. This is the vocal by itself. Feed slowly the chorus version in. I'm right where you want me. Light me up. Light me up, me up tonight. I'm your gasoline. Light me up. So 
there we go. Um, I mean, thing. just you take these two techniques alone tonight, and you've got banging drums with, you know, everything just super punchy, vocalists that are, you know, jumping out yeah. of the track. I mean, what what to, what a cool little bag of tricks. And also, here. when I when I put the thingy together as well, I've just I completely forgot there's a foreman uh, function on uh-huh. uh, Neptune. So now imagine running that. Imagine running a synth lead and with your modulation wheel um, moving the formants up and down as you do it. It's just going to tear into stuff. It's going to be unbelievable. Wow. So actually, that's one thing to, to try and set up. Now, um, I just want to. Sh- now, one thing I was going to do today, we were working on something. The track will bring it back. Um, and I wanted to show you kind of. I was going to do the initial time stretch demo um, using parts of this. Hang on, let me clear this out again. Um, but something really interesting happened, and this is one of the reasons why I use records, why I want to round off with it. Every time you open this program up, you come up with an idea to do something, um, <laughs> and it's pretty unique in that in that in that fact. I mean, we've even just talked about now. I've just seen that format idea, and I've got an idea to go and do something else as well. So, uh, no tea for a bit, unfortunately. <laughs> now, here's the track that we were working on today. And I've got its constituent parts down here. I pretty pretty much ran off some stems earlier on today, so um, I can show you guys again how we work within uh, and use this. So this is literally fresh off the desk today. Um, so we've got the constituent parts. Now, one of the things you might do again, as I, as I said to you earlier, if you were remixing, is you probably mute the drums and. Work on your own bits here, but what I suddenly discovered earlier on whilst I was doing this is that this entire track sounds really, really good at half time. Now, if you're at 126, um, half time of that is 63. Now, if I just mute our drums here for a minute, you'll hear the constituent parts. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, initially, it sounded like this. But I've now got this fantastic idea. I've actually done the section in the middle, but the whole thing runs at half time. And slowly. Is that an idea that comes to you as an inspiration from the the vocal line that she's singing? Bring it back, and you think, oh, I'll I'll have it and bring it back to tempo, or no, no, no. It's it's, it's using this program. This is why. I mean, this is the last thing I really wanted to show you. I'm kind of I'm pretty much done now, but I just wanted to say that every time I boot this program up, um, now, I'm not going to say that this track was finished in um, thing. The, the initial drum programming and the baseline parts and stuff like that were done within record. This was in from another sequencer, but then dropping it back into record. Uh, and as soon as I played it half time, I'm just thinking, well, that sounds amazing. But then I need to bring it back up to full time. And how am I going to do that? Well, it's easy. I just import the stems from whichever sequencer I am into that. Draw these bits in. All of the effects sound fantastic with the real time time stretch engine. Draw my tempo ramp back up to it and then kick back in. And it's the only program I know that can do that, and I can trust to do it as well. Huh, wow. So you, just so I understand, you did this track in record, and then you exported stems, brought it back into a blank document. No, no, no. This, this, uh, the initial, um, the ignition part of this track, I'm not going to say that the, the whole thing was mixed in. Oh, I see, I see, I see. 
sequencer. But the initial drum program, initial baseline work and stuff like that and some of the effects, so it kind of started in here. I see. Went off to elsewhere. And now to finish it off, this is the only thing that I know that's going to allow me to do that tempo ramp properly. Interesting. It's wonderful. Very interesting. Yeah, totally cool. Well, my God, you know, the the number of things – it's funny, actually. We got a, a comment uh, from somebody a while back that said that they never get through these broadcasts because they go run off and start making music. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, that's fantastic. That's what, that is what it's all about. I mean, I, uh, the number of times I've been to uh, – to demos and uh, or to trade fairs and things like that. And as soon as you see a piece of equipment, that's what it's all about. And that, that's why it's great that things like this are bringing actually people together. And, and you know, if anyone gets inspired by anything that we've said here this evening to go off and do something. Fantastic. Right. No, I mean, absolutely. I, I can, I, I have heard about actually, you know, I, I sort of uh, heard it through the grapevine that you gave this uh, producers conference talk on parallel processing and everybody was mm-hmm. buzzing about it uh, at Propellerhead that you know how cool it was and how great the examples were so i was really excited to to see this and i it's like one of those things i just am like okay tonight it's i got my plan now i'm gonna sit down and and play with parallel processing and i'm gonna do that vocal thing and that's just all really cool yeah the, the, the parallel thing is the secret to modern records because at the moment there's a really interesting thing happened that um the u.s in particular has taken 4-4 music completely um and embraced it which it, no one was expecting especially considering um, the urban artists have really embraced it as well. What that does mean is that the biggest mix engineers on the planet and the best ones, the ones that literally just mix all day and have techniques coming out of their ears, um, are now mixing dance music, which means we've got to up our game. Everyone making dance music now has to step up to the mark because there are records coming out that uh, are starting to push the boundaries of sonically what is possible. And One of the tricks is this parallel technique. Um, it's been there for an awful long time within within American processing. I mean, there are certain guys that have all sorts of compressor groups set up and things like that. But if you can get your head into it and, and really play with it, and the, the joy here is that you have an analog, analog, mono, uh, analog modeled console. Um, so in other words, as you start to play with this and you start to play with the EQ and the compression, um, and again, one thing I completely forgot to show you is at the top of this, you can squash it to pieces. Um, now, the guy was showing it was saying duplicate track. Yes, that is the other way to completely do this. Um, very, and I'll just show you very, very quickly if I can duplicate tracking devices. Um, let me show you what happens when you start to really mess with the input. Bearing in mind, this is analog modeling. So I'm going to show you our original drum track. And I've got another one, exact copy here. And as you can see, I've already put the game. Now I'm going to slam it. Gotta watch peak on this because it will start to destroy it. But to be able to ramp, <laughs> to be able to ramp the input up like that, and to start to even distort something in a digital domain, so back to original, and now feed in the comparator. immediately yeah absolutely it's much easier when you have audio tracks like that because it's so easy to just um, completely duplicate the device um, when you've got other devices when you've got things like Rex players and things like that I would do it the splitting way just to make sure you've definitely got the same audio going into the um, into the mixer um, but that's it right awesome well listen James I uh, I and everyone in the uh, in the chat room here I will give you you know I, I wish I had an applause button I keep Keep meaning to get myself an applause sample here at the end of these sessions, but um, I just I want to thank you guys. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for taking time here, showing us this stuff, and you know if you uh, if if you're willing to share those files, we would love to tear them apart. So that's yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm more than happy to. This is at the end of the day that it's you know the people that make music have to stick together at the moment because. We don't have uh, an awful lot of sales going on out there at the moment. I'm sure it will change in the future, but if we can all stick together and actually make better music together, um, then this industry is going to survive. Right. Right on. 
Cool. Well, listen, have a good night. Thanks for. Yes, uh, anyway, I better start cooking now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People have been better enjoying your. In. People have been enjoying the kitchen studio in the background. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the studio with everything, including the kitchen sink. So uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, take care, James, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. I'm sure. Yeah, brilliant. Take All care. Right, take care. So that's it for us tonight, and thank you. Listen, we are far from done with the record mixer. If you tune in tomorrow night, we are going to be speaking with Gary Bromham. And he is, um, my God, he's, he's produced and, and, and written songs and, and engineered uh, at Olympic Studios with major artists. This guy knows his stuff. And he's going to be actually showing us how you can sort of take um, his techniques and knowledge from these large format SSLs at Olympic and apply it to the mixer inside record. So uh, that's going to be a really cool session. Definitely tune in for tomorrow night. I'm not quite sure the time. It might be 9 o'clock European. It might be 10 o'clock. I'm, I'll have to check the schedule. If you go to our website, propellerheads.se slash MMM, you can read up on it. You can set a Facebook reminder for the event. You can um, find out the time and all that stuff. So awesome. Take care, guys. Have a good night. And I will see you tomorrow for another Music Making Month event. See ya.